so we have a lot of things to do, a lot of reports to fill out, a lot of surveys, but some of them are really fairly important and it's easy to ignore them. Um, and one of them is called the Private School Universe Survey, uh, PSS. And the data is collected by the National Center for Education Statistics, which is really part of the uh, US Department of Education. And then NCES, National Center for Education Statistics, farms that data collection out to yet another company called Westfair. So we often are getting requests from all these folks and not really sure what you should be filling out and what you shouldn't. Uh, but the bottom line is that that's a pretty important survey to fill out. It really tracks um, private schools across the whole U.S. And it is a huge marketing tool um, when we get to the testing part of that. There's another step. But even the survey itself helps us determine how many private schools are there in the U.S and how many uh, students do they serve, what percentages, and it becomes really important to get that data, and the only way we can get the data is from each school participating. <clears throat> and in a perfect world, my slides will advance. Here we go. So obviously we know there's lots of reasons to not participate. You have too much to do already. You don't know who the people are. Why does it matter? Parents don't care. This is the big reason. And we're trying to please the parents. They pay the bills. Um, surveys and testing are something that um, just clogs up teachers and students' schedules. And it's really hard to figure out how to uh, integrate all of that. But the reasons to participate in the private school universe survey is that uh, statistics on success rate, like graduation rates, national test scores, they can't be published. None of this info can be published or used in statistical compilations unless there's at least 70% of the private schools nationally that participate. And um, unfortunately, you'll see some statistics I'll give you here in a little bit. Um, we had 69.2% participation on the last survey and on the last round of um, testing, which means that none of that data could be used. Um, NCES, the National Center for Educational Statistics, is the organization that maintains private school uh, statistics. And they have a website that has a school locator guide, but only schools that respond to the survey appear in their search function. So by not participating, we, we kind of eliminate the ability to, um, to be listed there. And so I did put in a link just to um, show you what that search piece looks like. Um, and while that's loading, if it decides to load, um, just to let you know that uh, private school students score significantly higher than public school students um, in a variety of testing areas, but that can't be published again unless at least 70% of the private schools participate. Um, so this is, and, and can you see this? Not if you can, this is the um, search function. Are you seeing this? No? Uh, resume share. Okay, I guess that may not work, but um, you can certainly, uh, and I'm going to post this recording on our website in case you want to go back and look at a later time um, where the private school search function is. So data, again, just to emphasize, data that's collected is meaningless if we don't get at least a 70% participation. And when I talk about um, who is participating, it's all private schools. So the National Association of Independent School folks, the Catholic schools, the three different Lutheran church bodies of schools, us, the ELCA, um, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, and then a variety of other groups like the um, Seventh-day Adventist schools, the Islamic schools, Montessori, Waldorf, just a whole, all of the private schools that are represented. This does not take into account any charters, by the way. Charters are part of the public school system. So um, 
It should matter. It's a great marketing tool once those stats are released. Graduation rates that show up on the survey, you know, we have higher graduation rates for kids in um, private school than in public. And um, the participation time for surveys and testing are really pretty minimal. So the PSS, which is the Private School University Sur uh, Universe Survey, is conducted by NCES in partnership with the U.S. Department of Ed. And um, with increasing concern about alternatives in education, interest and need for data on private ed is increased. And um, that's how the, why this data is collected. They do a biennial a survey on the total number of private schools, teachers, and students, and build an accurate and complete list to serve as a sampling. They started doing this private school survey in um, 98 and 90 school year, and it's been conducted every two years since. And it was just this last go round that was not able to be published because of low participation on the private school side. Public schools have to um, complete this survey as well, just um, so that you know. And they are required by their districts, so they, we, they do get pretty good data on the public schools. Um, so to um, be contacted, those of us who are school group officials, myself representing the ELCA schools, we supply the database to the um, NCES folks that send out the survey. So it's also really important that we have good data on our schools and we know which of the ELCA congregations have schools, which ones don't, and what grades they serve. So what we're looking for is anything from grades K through 12 or comparable ungraded levels and they have to have at least one or more teachers. So we don't um, include organizations that provide um, support for homeschooling, for example. We have a few churches that have programs that help um, homeschool um, individuals and parents and support them, but that's not tracked, and that is tracked both by us uh, within the ELCA uh, schools organization internally, and it's also not tracked by NCES. So um, the a list frame which was developed in the uh, 1989-90 survey is updated periodically. So every two years I send a new database, for example, as do the execs from the other private school organizations. And then um, they also, the staff at NCES does a Bureau of Census review in case there are um, families that report that their children are attending a private school that doesn't show up on any of our lists, then they're able to contact those schools directly and get data on them. Um, and so the kind of things that are asked in the PSS are religious orientation, level of school, size of school, length of the school year, length of school day, total enrollment. And again, we're looking for anything K and up. So within the ELCA, we have a fair number of early childhood programs that also offer kindergarten classes. So those are tracked. And those are probably our lowest participation level because many of those early childhood centers see themselves as being early childhood only and they kind of forget that that kindergarten data needs to be tracked. Um, the number of graduates, whether it's single sex, co-ed, um, number of teachers, program emphasis, and, and then the type of uh, kindergarten program that's offered. So in 2009-2010, 93 93.6% of the private schools responded to the survey. And again, in 2015-16, only 69.2%. And then remember that there has to be a 70% participation to publish results. Um, which we didn't meet. Surveys are sent to all schools with at least kindergarten and up. So th that's kind of talks about the survey part of this. Then, then the second piece is NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Um, and this is also generated from the U.S. Department of Education. Those, those are the folks are ultimately looking for the statistics. But this is such a huge, big entity and serves so many thousands and thousands of schools, public and private across the U.S., that there are all these different entities that um, exist. And that's where it gets really confusing, all of these acronyms and different organizations. But NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, is the largest 
um, continuing a nationally representative assessment of what students in public and private schools know and what they can do in various subjects. Private schools represent about 23% of the schools in the whole nation and serve about 9% of the students. So if you look at that 23% as our number of schools, that's huge. And if we're missing from the picture, we don't do a very good job in um, what, what Nate calls the nation's report card, how are children doing. This is the part that's really important for you private school uh, administrators to uh, be involved in because um, this is the marketing tool. When you can say some of those statistics that come out regarding the um, assessment and, and fourth and eighth graders are assessed, and if you're able to say that kids in private schools score X percentage points higher uh, in science, math, reading than public school students, um, obviously that's a huge feather in your cap. So it's very important that we get those statistics and, and have them accurate. Uh, private schools make an important contribution. You share your class time and encourage your students to participate. Um, when students take part in NAEP and give their best effort, we get the most accurate measure possible of student uh, achievement. And I'm not going to take time to show you this video now, but there is a video, and again, I'll post this on the website, or you can jot it down if you choose to. I can also email this, these slides to you, but um, this video is a great thing that you can show to your teachers, and they will be able to um, they will be able to watch it and, and hear some feedback from teachers on the value of the test. And it really doesn't take very long. It's very short testing um, picture that is taken of the fourth and eighth grade students. Uh, private school students selected for NAEP will take the assessment between January 30th and March 10th. Um, and not every school is selected to do testing. Um, I don't know if either of you principals that are on this, um, I, I see um, Tammy nodding, you've been selected to participate. Good, and Don, I can't see you. I think you've um, uh, closed off your video and that's fine. Um, but just know if you have been selected, please do participate. And the assessments will be in civics, geography, mathematics, reading, US history, and writing. And the NAEP representatives will help you prepare for the assessments. And this is the first year that the assessments will be, that the data will be um, collected via tablets. And I believe that they supply the tablets. Is that correct, Tammy? I see you nodding. Yes, which is great. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool that you don't even have to worry about the technology. They provide it for you. And they come on site and they're there to answer questions, the NAEP representatives are. So um, again, I wanted to make this short. I wanted to make it a quick overview and just to encourage you to participate in the surveys in the NAEP testing. There are a couple of other programs that exist and I didn't want to get into them in a long um, uh, way today, but there's also the National Teacher and Principal Survey. <coughs> Excuse me, and I do apologize, I have a cold, so. <coughs> I actually feel good I've hung in there this well um, for the, the last little bit of time without coughing. Um, but the National Teacher and Principal Survey is another piece that looks at how well our teachers are educated, uh, what their backgrounds are, how long they've been in the field, all those things. That's an important survey if you're asked to participate in that. That is not every school. Again, there's certain schools selected. But a, most of this info comes via email so it does require you to kind of pay attention to those emails that have some of these acronyms in the subject line that might be easy to overlook um, they do make a, a, a number of attempts however where on the data collection for um for the survey they'll do a mail out and then they'll phone and they'll even do site visits if necessary I mean, they try really hard to to get participation but again um, there's always some that are missed or just choose not to participate 
Um, the last thing I have listed on this page was participating in the middle grades longitudinal a longitudinal study, and I see I have a typo, I apologize. If asked to do so, that should say. Um, we encourage you, if you're contacted about doing the middle grades longitudinal, to participate. Uh, we also, one thing I didn't mention here, but we have done in past years, and we have not done it in a few years, is done an internal survey on ELCA schools and early childhood centers so that we can track within our own church body. And we um, found our participation rates were very low um, over the years dropped off. Uh, and I think the last time we did it, which was the 2013-14 school year, we only had about a 37% uh, participation rate. And um, it's not that within the church body, it's not that we can't publish those results. If they're below, we don't have the same mandate that we have to have 70% participation. But there is a reason that that uh, percentage is chosen by the US Department of Education. And I think it bodes well to say it's probably the same with us. You don't get a really true picture with a low participation rate. You hear from the people who generally have strong schools, strong administrators, time in their uh, schedules to participate and fill out the surveys. And so we're not hearing from some of the extremes. We're, you know, we're hearing from um, the schools that tend to be a little larger, have more staff. So we have not done that survey in the last few years, the internal ELCA one, but um, uh, we work with the research and evaluation department at the ELCA churchwide offices in Chicago to put that together. And I plan to work with them to have it done um, in the 2017-18 school year. So we will be doing that again to see if we can get a better participation rate on that as well. So um, I said this would be quick, and it, and it was. Again, I will um, share this, these slides on the website. 